right, here we go. Cumulative review eight, problems 26 to 40. Who's ready? I know I am. So we're going to find the domain first. Remember, within a square root function, the we cannot take the square root of a negative number, so it must be greater than greater than or equal to zero. Well, if I add the 4x over, 3 must be greater than or equal to 4x. Divide by 4. x must be greater, or excuse me, 3 over 4 must be greater than or equal to x, or x must be less than or equal to 3 over 4. 4. <laughs> Which means I'm going from negative infinity to 3 over 4, or 0.75. All right, my zeros, I set my square root function equal to zero and solve. Square both sides, 3 minus 4x equals zero, 3 equals 4x, x equals 3 over 4. Now, only with the square root function are the zeros the same as the domain, okay? Only with that square root function. All right, when we're looking at this function, please do not make the mistake as people have in the past, all right, of setting these zeros equal to the domain. All right, because in the domain, I cannot divide by zero, so my denominator cannot equal zero. So x squared cannot equal 49. Square root both sides. x cannot equal plus or minus. Seven. So my domain is going to go from negative infinity to negative 7. Union negative 7 to 7. My mouse is... Okay, this thing is weird today. And 7 to infinity. To find the zeros of this function, I need to set my numerator equal to zero. Subtract the three. Four x equals negative three. Divide the four. X equals negative three over four. So negative three over four comma zero. Wow. Who's enjoying themselves? I know I am. Hello. 28. Given the parent function f of x equals x squared, describe the transformation. Please write your transformation in order uh, you would perform the operations. All right, remember with, out, with these transformations, I start from the inside out. So first, I'm going to go right 4 because when we're on the inside, we do the opposite of what we would think. I would think I would go to the left 4, but I go to the right 4. Then I have a horizontal This is going to be a stretch or a shrink. Well, since it's a 3, I'm going to divide by 3. So technically, this is going to be a shrink by 3. All right, I got this negative out in front or a flect over my x-axis. Axis. All right, because that negative is in front of the f of x. And with this 5 on the outside, that means I go up 5-er. How about that? That's neat. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty neat. Um, yeah, I would say so. All right. Given the graph f of x, apply the transformation. Wow. Wow, we, we've had the same graph for a while now. Negative 2, negative 2 negative 1, a 2, 1, negative 1, and 2, 3. All right, again, I work from the inside out, so I'm going to apply the inside here. This is a plus 2. Remember, it's the opposite of what we think, so I go left, 2, which means I'm subtracting 2 from every single x value. So, this becomes negative 4. Oh my goodness, what is going on with this thing today? I don't know. You tell me. Negative 4, still not working well. Negative 2, minus 2, negative 
3, 2, minus 2, negative 1, negative 1, minus 2, 0, 3. Why can't, why can't this thing work? So aggravating. All right, for sure. Now I have a or excuse me, a vertical, a vertical stretch, a vertical shrink. And I'm just going to go two steps in one and say negative one half. So I'm going to multiply all my y values by negative one half. This becomes negative four, one. This becomes negative three, negative one. This becomes negative one times one half. Negative one times a half, or negative one half, is positive a half. This becomes zero comma negative one point five. And lastly, I go down one, which means I subtract one from every y value. So this becomes negative four comma, oh my gosh. Oh my word. Zero. You ever seen a grown man cry? Well, you're about to if this thing doesn't start working. Up there, negative three. Negative three, negative two. Wow, isn't that cool? Here we go. Negative one comma my one half minus one is negative one half. Zero comma negative two point five. Boom. Graph all your points. Negative four zero is gonna be out here somewhere. All right, negative three, negative two. Negative one, negative one half, zero, negative two point five. Seems like something like that. Hopefully, your lines are straighter than mine. Specific, more specifically, this one. Let's keep going. We're having fun. Lego. Here we go. All right. So find where the function is increasing. Remember when the function is increasing? Okay. Um, it's as if my slope. Is positive okay so my function is increasing right here and right there so when we do increasing and decreasing intervals we're always using parentheses number one all right number two we use our x values so I'm going from negative three to zero two to infinity where is the function decreasing? All right, remember the function is decreasing when I, my slope is negative, when it looks as if my slope is negative. So it's going from negative infinity to negative three, and then from zero to two. Does this function have an absolute maximum? If so, what is it? If not, why not? Does it have an absolute maximum? No, it does not. Okay, because the function, because our y values go to positive infinity. All right, therefore, there it cannot be an absolute maximum. Does it have an absolute minimum? Yes, it does. Here. All right, right there. That is our absolute minimum of our function. So at x equals negative 3, Um, the absolute, the absolute min is negative 2. All right, find a relative minimum. Well, a relative minimum, okay, would be here because relative to all the points around it, all right, that is the minimum. 
So at x equals 2, the relative min is 1. That's pretty neat. Find the relative maximum right there. All right, relative to all the points around it, that is the maximum, okay? Again, it's not the absolute maximum because our function goes to infinity. So, at x equals 0, the relative, huh, we're just going to go with it, that's an m, is, what was it again? Oh my goodness, I'm going to freak out. Is three. Oh my goodness. There it is. Is three. And we move oh, and we move on. The best thing about these problems, you just get to move forward. Alright, and we're moving forward. We are cruising. Okay. All right, these are, these are a struggle at sometimes, okay? Remember, this is not g minus 7, input 3 afterwards. This is g of 3 minus f of 3. So the first thing I need to do is find g of 3. Well, g of 3 is 3 times 3 squared minus f of 3, which is 4 times 3 minus 9. All right. 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27 minus 4 times th 4 times 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 9 is what? 3. So my answer should be 24. Wow. Wow. All right. Let's go G times H of X. Remember, this can be rewritten as G of X times H of X. G of X is 3X squared times 1 over 5X. You can think of this as over 1. This equals 3x squared over 5x. Don't stop here because some an x cancels. So it's 3x over 5. All right. F of g of negative 4. So I need to find g of negative 4 first, which equals... 3 times negative 4 squared. Well, negative 4 times negative 4 gives me 16. -er. All right, 16 times 3 gives me 48. So now I find F of 48. Man, I'd be saving a lot of time if this thing would write. Z God bless America. All right, so I do. Four times 48 minus nine. Well, four times 48 is 192. Minus 9 is 1, 8, 3. Hmm. Hmm. G. <laughs> G. <laughs> G divided by F means G of X over <laughs> F of X. <laughs> All right, so g of x over f of x means I take g, and I put it on top, and I take f, and I put it on the bottom.